moving on to back to our first tech uh, challenge. We have ourselves uh, an opportunity actually here to try and doing a little bit of more uh, coding with this. I actually have Absolutely. right here uh, the setup that we can actually start working on making our own program to help uh, clamps over there uh, do a few different activities. Now, now, at the very beginning of the stream, we did an activity where we had uh, poor Stemmy. Where, where is Stemmy at this point? Stemmy's on the ground. No, Stemmy! We gotta rescue Stemmy all over well, again. We gotta, we gotta rescue Stemmy so that we can trap Stemmy so that we can rescue Stemmy again. Okay, well, this so, is our friend Stemmy. Yep, this is our little friend Stemmy. Uh, he's, he's, he's adorable. He, is, uh, he lives in Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, he has three dogs. Is, what does one of them fly? Yes, named he, Franklin. He has Franklin? Yeah. Stemmy Stemmy's owns Franklin. Yeah. Okay, perfect. He, he left him at the kennel while he went to the Planet X so that he could get this going. <laughs> so, we, had, we need to have, uh, Stemmy has been sent out onto this planet uh, in order to help set up a force field to protect everybody, right? Yes. And uh, in the process, uh, as we did earlier today, Stemmy got trapped by a block sitting randomly out of nowhere in space. Just somewhere. Just pinning him to the ground. And we got to help Stemmy in order to make this happen. Yes. Now, before, with the fourth, uh, with our previous uh, setup, which we did for kind of the idea of fourth through ninth grade uh, based curriculum activities, uh, we had the opportunity to try and develop a program that you and I could uh, could try to accomplish. Right. Uh, if you want to show yeah, off, yeah, what so you got we, right we there. Yeah, so we wrote some pseudocode here uh, on a piece of paper, right? So yeah. we followed the guide, uh, which you can find on the blog post if you do want to do it in your own classroom. But we were able to work through uh, the packet that we were given, and we wrote some pseudocode. So move forward, move forward, turn, move forward again. All right, so again, we're making something really understandable and simple for especially younger students or students who are new to coding. Um, but what you can actually see here in the first TV studio is we took our STEMI course that, of course, Shadow aced by himself by jumping through our instructions. I, I could only do it through the instructions written out by you in that nice big font. Thank you. Yeah. It was all my coloring energy that I had. Right. Uh, so we've t we've taken our FTC robot, our first tech challenge robot, uh, clamps, clamps, as we've called him today. Uh, good old clamps is actually going to run the same obstacle course. We now. of course gotta we gotta make this a little bit more higher oh, yes. stakes. We've we gotta, gotta make work sure on our that everything is not as safe as it seems. Now that poor Stemmy is trapped underneath that block right there. Right. So we've got Stemmy back on the map on Planet X, and we are actually going to work through the same challenge. Now, what we talked about earlier is that you we've used this pseudocode to really start to think like a programmer. Sorry, it's the uh, lead mentor in me. I'm cleaning up from our other activities while we're working. I mean, we shouldn't just have <laughs> blocks strewn about no, our workspace No, not at here. all. You shouldn't have stuff just strewn all over your workspace. We, we need a safety inspector for, <laughs> for this broadcast oh, no. today is what we need. So uh, what we're doing is we, we took this pseudocode, right, and we've We've started as a younger student to learn how to think like a programmer. But now, with our first tech challenge, we're going to use the information and the systems that we have inside of ClassPack to open up the code and write our own autonomous code for our first tech challenge robot, Clamps. Um, Clamps is now going to go follow that same process. We've, we've already determined the steps. We know where we need to go. We know what we want to do, right? We want to go forward and turn and repeat the process. But now we're going to put it into block-based uh, programming mm -hmm. in the first tech challenge environment. Uh, and then we're going to try to run it on this robot. So as another piece of celebrating uh, Computer Science Education Week, we are going to code our first tech challenge robot. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I, I, f I had a lot of opportunity to, to try and get into like, the steps of our, of our rocket and all that. Would you want to take the, the reins on this? Sure. Yeah. I, can, I can sit. All right. Yeah. I will take the reins on, uh, on coding our, our robot here. I'm very excited to see all this in action. So. We have right. ourselves, uh, wh what are we looking at here? So we're looking at the sort of uh, first tech challenge robot controller environment. So I'm sitting in here, and this is just a set of all of the different codes that we have. Now, I know we talked about when we uh, were driving our boy clamps over there. Right. We were going to take a look at what that code looked like. Sure, yeah. So I think I'm going to open that idea. one up. So this is how we were able to control clamps earlier, is that right? Correct. We are connected to the robot, again, on our phone. So our phone links up to the robot, right. um, to the control board there. Now, what that means is that all the motors, all the sensors are plugged into that control board, and we're able to see what do those mean, right? Which motors are which? What sensors are which? How can we sort of get through our code? Yeah. Now, can we make this a little bit bigger? Because there are a I lot of blocks there. Be, I believe I so can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. Now, can big. I drag it go. around? All right. Yeah, that feels really nice. Because, you know, the first, the first instinct I had on this when I first saw this, too, was like, wow, that's... There's a lot there. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. I'm, uh, even though I have a computer background, like, 
this, this is this all yes. of a sudden seems like a lot. So why don't we why don't we try to break down kind of what's going on? Yeah, here? we're gonna. This is the uh, again the teleoperated code, the driver controlled code. So sure. when I've initialized my robot and I've started it, when I pick up this gamepad, I'm gonna be able to drive forward and backward and move around. Okay. Um, so every program that you run in First Tech Challenge is called an op mode. This is just what they call it. Okay. Um, sort of like a set of instructions. So like short for like op like an operating, operating mode, mode right. so that like <laughs> as the robot's running, it has this particular way of operating. Precisely. Sure. Okay. Um, so we've started to run this particular op mode, which is called Tink Drive. Sure. Um, and now this is something that the first team uh, clued us into. Uh, this robot is actually wired such that the Left, if you told the right side to go forward and the left side to go forward, just the way that they're wired, uh, one of them would go the other way. So to start our program off before we do anything at all, it tells us at the top of the program here, no matter what I tell left drive to do, uh, flip it. Right, so that way we're yeah. driving equally on both sides. Because the the idea being that the two motors are set in opposite directions, Correct. so that they can have the wheels on opposite sides of the robot. Yes. But one of them needs to flip over to make right. sure. Right. One that of if we're going to doing the same thing. Right, and it makes it clearer at the beginning to say if we are, you know, fully, you know, we have this robot. We say go forward, send yeah. this robot forward a few inches. That we're not going to run one side backwards and one side forward because that would result in a turn instead of an actual. Uh, Movement forward. Yeah, let's actually bring clamps up here again. Our just, boy clamps. Just so we can see kind of what we're talking about here. Welcome yeah. on in. So we got if we if we take clamp and clamps and we set them like this, you can actually see the two motors that are attached on either side of this robot here that actually control those back wheels. And right. you can see that though they're how they're hooked up to the wheels are just a little bit opposite one another to pull that off. So, yes, so that's go. why we have this reverse. It's just a, a way of sort of setting the tone and setting the structure before we do this, because otherwise, every time we ask the robot to go forward, we'd have to give it different instructions for left and right. Absolutely. So instead of making it you know, difficult every time, we just set the tone ahead of time. Sure. I'm going to need to stop scrolling like that, because I don't know how to scroll on this computer. <laughs> um, so all this is telling us is that while this operator mode is active, right, mm -hmm. repeat while, EdgeBot Tank Drive Op Mode is active. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the name of this particular yes, op, this one is operation called tank drive. mode that we have. Yeah. Uh, it's going to say, set the power of the left drivetrain to the gamepad. Which left is this right here, stick. of course. Yep. Right, so this is straightforward enough. What, my what right are, side to my right side. Real quick, what are those things above that, by the way? Uh, those are just comments. So it's teach because they knew we'd be uh, using this to learn Absolutely. from. Absolutely. And just because they're you know making good coding practices, they <laughs> left plenty of comments <laughs> in here for us to understand. So better practices than a lot of coders that I met before. For sure. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this is just something that's important to you know help set the structure. Um, we are running all of these different blocks inside of again. They're all nested into this op mode. So we've got repeat while this operation mode is active do this. And then we've had all of our blocks for the different things that our robot's going to do, all the different commands that we could put through a gamepad uh, here on the screen. So again, while this is active, we're going to make sure that the sticks mean, oh, let's make sure our robot is not initialized. I, I, I uninitialized. Thank it you. I was about <laughs> in between, to I was like, just in case we don't drive clamp right off the table. You've got to make would... sure your robot is not enabled before Safe, you drive it. Safety first, Safety folks. first. Safety first. Uh, so, Okay, when I hit left, left is going to go forward. When I mm -hmm. hit right, right is going to go forward. Yeah. Same deal for backwards. So it just says, set the power value of whatever value you get from this, assign that to the drive. Now, those little blue uh, little uh, pieces right there, those are actually like negative signs, right? I think that's... No, this is just what the a so, direct value. So the, I, I remember as uh, as we were oh, talking with uh, right. with with uh, uh, one of our Tom, uh, yeah, Tom, Tom, that's right. Uh, working the idea that the gamepad actually, weirdly enough, and this is one of the sort of thing that you'd have to kind of experiment to find out. <laughs> uh, this gamepad in particular, when you move the sticks down, it actually is a positive number. If you move the sticks up, it sends to your robot a negative number. Right. So, so we're in, flipping that. In order to make sure, because you, you usually think typically push up to go forward, we have to make that a negative number in order for this to work. That's what I would do. <laughs> that, you, I mean, it's one of those things where you wouldn't know until you try, and then all of a sudden be like, oh, well, oh. now I know. We're backwards. Yeah. Um, and then again, you know, another comment here that we're using the A and the Y buttons to control the arm. So if I hit A on the gamepad, it's going to move the arm, and again, that's forward. So mm -hmm. our value here uh, is between 0 and 1, 0 being no power, 1 being full power. Okay. Uh, so 0.6, it's moving a little over half power. Yeah. 
pretty good speed. <laughs> Perhaps about 60% power. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. And then if you notice, A is in one direction and then Y is in the other. So when you were driving clamps, you would hit A to go up and Y to go down. So you're moving that arm around, and that's how he was sort of waving at us when he finished our course. And so we have these different uh, if, do, else, if, do, else to right. determine... First off, if this button's being pressed, do this. If this button's being pressed, do this. But if neither of the button's being pressed, then we just set the power of the arm to zero. To Is nothing. Right? If I don't hit either button, then just don't run it at all. Sure. Which okay. makes sense. Yeah. You want to make sure <laughs> Otherwise that... Otherwise, your arm's just sort just of waving around. Yeah, you don't want that, that happening all the time there. Perfect. Yes. Okay, cool. Gosh, that scroll really does not work. There's I will, a lot going. By the end of the stream today, I will remember that that's not <laughs> how you scroll. <laughs> just in time to leave. Exactly. Uh, and again, we're just using the, the bumpers, these fronts of the controls, uh, to open and close the claw. Um, I can't, what is this? Oh, incrementally. <laughs> I was trying to figure Increment. out. It, I was incredibly fast was for some reason why my brain, why my brain Extra decided. Extra speed. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's explaining that the bumpers on the gamepad, uh, you're going to have you know your different positions of opening and closing the claw. Mm -hmm. And then this X and B is actually a much more specific. It means instead of 0.5, we're going by 0.05. So you can get that really down. extra precise movement if you really needed to. Right. So this is just setting it to a particular spot, mm -hmm. open or closed. And then this guy is moving it up a little bit, up a little bit more, up a little bit more. Which so is again, handy. these are all of these components of if I say this, then do this. If I say something else, do this instead. And then the last one would be, or else just don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, now, this is another set of if statements just meant to uh, protect the servo, These right? So safety point of, of <laughs> positions safety parts for this. Code. Yeah. Uh, so this is something that just will say, you know, please don't put this motor beyond this position because you don't want to damage your motors. Because this motor, aka the servo, is yeah, keeping this, track. This guy oh, up that here, yeah. oh, so with with the actually two hands here, this servo here, this motor is keeping track of where these two are right. uh, compared to where they were, and they want to make sure that they don't go past. A certain point, the so limits. they aren't trying to snap themselves off, right? Right, because the worst thing you could do is build an awesome robot and then code it without <laughs> limits in it, and then throw your arm, uh, you know, off the robot. I can't possibly relate to I, that. I've never no, done that I'm before. I'm sure it's never happened before to anyone here. Not at all. Um, and then this is another component where, uh, when you're in a competition situation, you want to see the telemetry info, the data on your robot. Uh, so you couldn't see this while you were driving, but on our driver station, right at the bottom, it was telling me how fast we were going, what our position was. Sure. Uh, so we've got a lot of you know sensors integrated into the robot. We've also got a, a, a light and color sensor uh, on the robot. So if we were doing other activities with this, we could use those to sort of gauge our environment. Um, so this is just a component of, hey, please print that out to the phone so that while I'm driving, I can see information about my robot. Because in First Tech Challenge, you're not right next to your robot as you're driving it. We're sitting here, we can see it. But when you're on the field, you're a couple feet back, you're a little bit taller than it, you might not see what's going on. Absolutely. And then that's our code. I mean, that's, I know it looks like a lot when you zoom this far out, but telemetry is a big component of it. But yeah. really, this is just saying, hey, robot, when I hit this button, please do this. And it's just a, a few of those different if statements to try to make that happen. Exactly. Now, there's a cool thing that's going on to the right of our blocks here, yes. too, that I think uh, we haven't necessarily done it here because it's already pre-assembled. But uh, as you add blocks, uh, to the screen in the center there. What happens to the stuff on the right? What is what is that first yeah, one? It looks so like a bunch of just gibberish to me. <laughs> uh, so a little bit same. Uh, so over <laughs> on the right is the, the Java code. So uh, we're setting these blocks up, obviously, to tell our robot what to do. But at the root of that, we're also you know programming in Java. If I wanted to, oh, I can make this bigger, I think. Could you try, uh, you can slide that over. It, could you try uh, con Command Plus on there? Command too. Plus. Because we can just make oh, the whole thing a little Oh, we can just make bigger. it all yeah, bigger. There we go. Now <laughs> we're cooking with gas. All right. So we've, um, we actually, I can scoot all of this yeah, over as well. There we go. Now we can see everything. So now we've got a, a look at what our code looks like in blocks. But also, this is that exact same code, exactly what we're doing here on this robot, but in Java. So you can actually see you know, the different comments that we have. So let's go all the way up because we're at the top. Mm -hmm. um, we've got put your initialization blocks here. Yay, we did it. And the reverse direction, Here's, which is all there. Right here is our arm set power. Yeah. So all of these different pieces, if you look uh, here, use X and B buttons to open and close claw incrementally. Well, there, right there, is our comment that says use X and B buttons to open and close. So now it says if gamepad 1 is servo position plus 0.5. That looks pretty familiar. If mm -hmm. gamepad 1 hits X, the servo position is increased by 
0.05. And the nice part about all this here is, you know, we have the blocks that are super nice and you, you can really easily drag and drop them in as you need. But if you are trying to get, say, your, maybe your high school class slowly uh, integrating from, or taking, going from blocks and transitioning to more traditional like Java code or mm -hmm. something of that nature, you can first off see how that develops and then eventually just start creating Java programs for the, the Tech Challenge robots, right? The exactly. First so robots. you can you can just code straight in Java. So for example, if it's something that's already taught in school, you can mm -hmm. totally start with Java. And actually up here, there is the option to just switch over from programming in blocks to programming in Java. Should I choose that? Um, the other cool thing is I can actually download this as either just this op mode in the block situation. Mm -hmm. I can download an image of the blocks, or I can export as its Java. own Java nice. project. Okay. So let's say I, I was on my team, yeah. or I was working in a class, and I was, you know, at the beginning of the semester, I started programming in blocks. And then over time, you know, I'm, I'm reading the Java side, and I'm getting it, and I'm like, oh, I understand, you know, if this servo position, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, I think I'm confident enough to start programming in yeah. Java without having to, you know, deal with this environment. Then all Great. of a sudden you could just take that code right there, mm -hmm. export it out, and then you have yourself that entire block to start off with. Exactly. And you can continue past that in Java instead. Precisely. So over the course of your time uh, on your team, you would be able to sort of evolve into huh. starting with block. Maybe okay. you love it that way. Maybe you want to say this. There's nothing wrong with programming this way. It's, uh, <laughs> it makes a lot more sense to me. Oh. I'm a very visual person, <laughs> so I like this. But some folks really just want to jump straight into Java, and that is OK, too. You can program however it is that gets successful code on your robot. And you can, you, don't, you can start on blocks without having to feel afraid that you'll just be stuck with that forever. You can slowly move on from there. Exactly. So uh, we saw the teleop uh, code right there, and it works really yes, great. Yes, we did. And we got a chance to drive it ourselves. But we can't, unfortunately, we can't even, like, uh, through the unfortunate wireless connections outside of our ship, we can't actively communicate with, right. with clamps on this. We need to actually tell clamps what to do before we send clamps out there. Correct. So what do we, what do we have to do in order to make sure that clamps knows exactly what's going on out there uh, to try and do it uh, by themselves? It looks like we're going to have to start an autonomous. I'm going to leave because I probably made changes to that code sure thing. that uh, we don't <laughs> want to save. Maybe not. So we are going to start a new op mode. All so right. here in our first tech challenge environment, I'm going to create new op mode. Sure thing. I'm going to try to click, click on there. it. <laughs> um, so we're going to call this clamps. All right. <laughs> clamps auton. Clamps auton. Good old clamps. Now, if we wanted to, we could go in and take any of our other um, operator modes and use them as a sample. So for example, if we were actually trying to make a new tank drive uh, and we wanted to adjust it, we wanted to change the controls or right. something like that, but we didn't want to edit, let's say this was my teammates, right? I don't want to edit over my teammates stuff, that wouldn't be That's cool. So I'm going to take that as a sample and then work on it on my own. And these are actually uh, like templates that would be used uh, that if, if you were to pick this up, you would actually have available to you so exactly. you could learn how to kind of build off of these different ideas right from the start. You don't have to like download anything extra to have these extra uh, templates here, exactly. these samples that are ready to go. Instead, they are they're built within the setup that you can use as you need. Yep. So we are uh, not going to use any of those. No, we're going we to start fresh. Oh All right. Boy, this is real scary, guys. Here we go. So here, here's a little bit of fun uh, behind the scenes background. Neither of us have tried this before. So we're going to experiment this with you at the same time. If you're like, oh man, this does, just doesn't seem like something I can do. Don't worry. We don't think we can do it either yet. <laughs> but we're going to learn how to do it together. And we're going to try. We're going to fail sometimes. And that's part of the process. It's OK to fail at these sort of things and not feel like you know what you're doing, as long as you're willing to keep trying to yep. do these things. That's a really big, important part of this. That's huge. I mean, I, I will be the first person to admit, uh, currently, I yeah. am not a programmer. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I've been involved as a, as a first student and alum and mentor for <laughs> 15 years now, uh, if that makes me feel real old. But um, I've always said, yeah, I, d I do build, I do strategy, I can do all mm -hmm. that. This is sort of like a like a cloud of mist to me. I don't understand it, well, but we're going to we, learn. Why don't we try to demystify that exact uh, space there? Precisely. Now, just you know, keep in mind, we said hour of code, not necessarily hour of successful code. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but that is a successful hour of code, oh, even if yeah. the code is not successful. Successful hour of code, potentially unsuccessful, autonomous. But that's there what we're we going to do. I mean, essentially, what we're doing is what we have when we started, we're starting totally fresh, is we've got uh, run op mode, and we're going to call clamps auton. So that's just saying, 
I've hit initialize. I'm ready to go on my you know my phone here. And, and what's what's happening there with a lot of those extra pieces that you're like, wait, we started fresh. Why are there so many pieces here? This is just to make sure that the robot knows that it needs to communicate with the phone and that they're running the same thing uh, right. before we can start doing stuff. Correct. So if our op mode is active. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually all we have to do is run. We don't necessarily have to loop because the autonomous portion of the game, whether it's in first class pack for first tech challenge or in the first tech challenge competition itself, uh, is a finite amount of time. Right. So, and at that point, when you're finished with the autonomous period, you go back to the phone and you initialize a new operator mode. For example, your teleoperator, your driver code. Right. So uh, this we can say we don't necessarily need to deal with the repeats. Yeah, it's really nice to be able to, to be able to repeat code, so you don't have to keep doing it oh, over and absolutely. over. Oh, absolutely. That's what our lovely repeat pseudocode too was. Like, yeah, save me time. And we might we might eventually do one somewhere in there as we worked with our pseudocode. But for right now, we can probably just get rid of. I that, think right? we're going to delete our repeat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> it's like I always all of those things are gone. All right, there all that helpful stuff. Yeah. It's gone. But it's okay because it's also in the in the on the side there if we really want to bring it back. Precisely. And the other cool thing about the way that the first tech challenge programming environment is is there's nothing in this list of options that I have that aren't actually on this robot. Yeah. Uh, so part of setting up the robot that again the first team here at headquarters has sort of put up ahead of our so of time. So graciously for us <laughs> is, and professionally. Um, of course. Is um they've been able to configure the robot. So it knows, for example, that this motor is the left drive and this is the arm motor. So you'll see it called arm right here in the code that we create. Um, that is something that if you were starting from scratch, you would learn how to do in class pack, probably in a different lesson. Right. Uh, so we're going to start with our blocks. And I think we go to our motor. Because right, what's the, oh, here, you've got our pseudocode. Yeah, we do. First uh, thing we want to do. So I think there's, there is a dual. Yeah, we oh we want to uh, work on making sure that yep we want to set our motors to to a particular mode there for sure. That's yes. gonna be a part of that. Are we we're doing this with encoders? So there is one thing that we do need to grab. Um, You're right. Yeah, before that, which is setting the direction of one of our motors here, because if we don't, as we talked about with our teleop, then all of a sudden one of those is not going to actually run the way we want it to. And that was our left. Yes. I our believe it was left. If it's not. You know what? We'll We're going to find it. out, and that's going to be fun. Well, the good thing is, I mean, the way that this is set up is, let's say we run it and it's not left. Yeah. Guess what? We can change it to right. Exactly, and it's easy enough as that. And we'll just find out because it'll start spinning. Precisely. <laughs> or go backwards. Actually, I think it'll go backwards in that case. But still, it would be a lot of fun. We'll find out. It'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. So we've got our left drive reversed. So that means when we say forward, it'll actually go forward. Right. Um, so again, now Correct. here in this, <laughs> we're going to really confuse We're, we're going to we're gonna confuse ourselves here a lot. So we've got our actuators, mm -hmm. uh, our DC motors, uh, yeah. which are left drive, right drive, and the arms. So that's these these motors here, which you guys can see are attached to any of the sort of driven components. And then our servo is the one up on you know clamps as little clamp. Yeah. Now we have two options here we can do. We can either yes. e each run each individual motor by itself. Yes. Or there's that dual mode there where we could run both of them at the same time. Yes. So that way we know exactly where they're going to be going with that, right? I would say probably uh, dual. Because if our first couple of commands are to move to forward, forward right. then wouldn't that just be setting both motors to power for a certain amount of time? Yeah, I think that would be work pretty well. So yeah, the, keeping in mind that the robot, uh, we, we have kind of two options when it comes to making the robot move, right? We can either turn on the wheels to a certain speed, let it run for a certain amount of time, and then stop those wheels. Right. Or we could try and ha have the wheels keep track of how far it's been going so far, right? Right. Correct. Now, but I, correct. I think for now, <laughs> fun. The, the best way to go about it for now, yeah, I think is is what you're doing here is just setting them to a certain speed for and an amount of time for telling them how to go, how long to go before stopping. Okay. Now the way that we do the stop is a sleep, but where is the sleep? I want to say under? it was in logic. I don't think so. No. I know it was a purple one. Oh, actually, you know what? It's uh, it, it might be in there, but I think if we click on utilities, ah, uh, there and then, <laughs> there's yep, a lot of there's those. a lot of utilities. Time? Time? No. 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 You Remember how time? we said we didn't do this before? Yeah. <laughs> he was right. Uh, above utilities. No. no. Text to speech clamps could tell us something. How about other devices on yep. the sensors? Yeah, they're right there. No. Nope. No, oh no! Hmm. This is where it all falls apart. Well, this is this is where it becomes fun. We get to do a little this bit of a hunt where and, it gets and see where fun. we can find this. Absolutely. So probably not variables because we're not going to do variables. We're just going to click on all the options until we yeah, find. Yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be neat. 
Why um, did I think sleep was purple? I thought sleep was purple too. I wonder if I wonder if you know in this sort of case when we're trying to figure out these sort of yeah. things. I wonder if there's a sample, a template that we could try to find that would have that. I that think so. So I'm going to save this. Okay. And I'm going to go to our blocks mm -hmm. and see what other options we have. Now I know that we were working on one a little bit before. I think it's called code. Hour of Code. That's perhaps. appropriate for what yeah. we're doing. Um. Oh, call. Call hour of code dot sleep. So where is call? Uh, <laughs> I think it was a function, maybe. You go to functions. Functions. Um, in, uh, wait, uh, let's, let's take a look here. If you're interested in driving, you may. No, um, I'm, I'm just trying to look through here. As I don't we go. remember. It was per it was it was definitely purple as you found there. So you're 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 right on that. Uh, I may not know my code, out. but I know my colors. <laughs> And we're, you know what? We started with our first Lego League Junior Discovery right. Edition. What color is the brick? Yep. It obviously helped me we here as I We figured that out. We are good at color identification. <laughs> now we just got to figure um, out how the rest of this goes. Uh, let us see. Is it probably not math. Oh, was it is lists? It? No. Not necessarily. Variable. But this this is part of the process. Here, under miscellaneous, find, call. And, and then, then we have to set. One of these, I think. Yeah. Right. Let me let me try that to make sure. No, that's not it at all. That's a different kind of call, I guess. Um, we have a few friends who are looking into it, but just in case. So we got the if there. No, that's wrong. That's not right. Let's take a look where else we could find this, maybe. <laughs> what, it, what, what about something. that very top piece, that linear op mode? Yep, there it is. Ah, yes, the really we found it. The one that we didn't click this whole yep. time. Perfect. See, we were all like, oh, it's got to be one of those advanced things all the way no, down no. towards the bottom. It's the very first one. <laughs> we should have started at the top and worked our way down. Of course. All right, so in linear op mode, we have this thing called call clamps a ton, which is the name of our program, dot sleep. sleep. Now, it doesn't mean that the clamps is suddenly going to stop moving and just fall asleep uh, for a certain amount of time. It just means that the, the program is going to do nothing. Okay. It's just going to ignore anything else for however much time we put in, right? Yeah, exactly. Correct. So, <laughs> this would be that we've started our robot. We're making sure that the drive sides are equal, right? They're mm -hmm. both going to go forward. We say forward. Um, set power, and it says f until, like, for, we're going to go for this one, sorry, we're going to go to one power for one second. Right. Um, now, I think. One power might be a little extreme for how yeah, far we're moving. Yeah, you were getting a little zippy with our these, buddy Clamps. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but just to show off how fast zip, zip, or, uh, Clamps can go, right? Zippy. Zippy. <laughs> zippy Clamps. That's uh, Clamps is his father's name. Uh, we have ourselves, call him Zippy. He, we have ourselves on this starting point right here, right? These yeah. blocks that we have taped out are relatively small. So, we, yeah, maybe a nice little uh, like, little I easy like to speed. start very, very low. And, and this yeah. is my experience where I've been in troubleshooting with autonomous in first tech challenge and first robotics competition mm -hmm. is like, I'd rather start with a piece of code that is way too slow or short or whatever, right. and then Okay, we know that point two was, you know, oh, that would be a turn. Why did I do negative there? I was say, if, if we didn't do the reverse on one of them, we would have to do that. But since we already have that block that says left drive direction, it's already going to automatically it's already gonna do go that straight. for us. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying kind of slowly, yeah. go forward for a second. Yep, for stop. one second. Uh, do we have a stop in there yet? Um, no, we don't. Because it's well, I, I guess technically well, the we wanna, program would end. Yeah, the, at that the, point. this is, this ends after a second. Yeah. So do we want to do we want to just like check our work here? And yeah. Well, why don't I, why don't I go grab uh, zippy clamps here zippy, and zippy clamps. set zippy clamps down on the starting point, and we can see what happens. So we start right on that start point, right? S for so we're gonna start. go S for start right here. I'm gonna start uh, just a, a big part of doing this sort of program. By the way, for those of you who have never done something like this before with your kids. Uh, make sure that their robot starts in the exact same spot every time. Because if you don't do that, uh, they're trying to control this robot based on the movements previous to it. And if you don't have it starting in that exact spot, then it's going to do something different every single time. <laughs> uh, something that very, very much frustrates kids of any age. Trust same. me. I, and me, yeah. You know, as, as a, a kid us as well. of 
of not first deck challenge age. It is very All right. frustrating. So there we go. I think uh, Zippy Clamps is doing pretty well down here. All right, Zippy Clamps. All uh, right, so we're going to run the program that, that we have on that uh, laptop mm -hmm. over there, and we're going to see what it does. So I've changed our uh, op mode here on the phone to Clamps Auton, just like we said. Yeah. Uh, and then because I can't see the robot, but you can, mm -hmm. I need to be you know very safe. Yep. And explain that I am going to enable the robot now, so please be careful. I we am being careful as best I can. Good. All right. Well, so right now what it should do is go forward down. pretty slowly for a second All right, when we start see. this. So, so go ahead. initialize. And once you, once you hit play on that phone, it's going to do exactly what right. we told it to do, right? Uh, nothing better. more, nothing less. <laughs> better. Well, we're about to find out. Okay. All right. So it was success. pretty good. So it moved a little bit. Uh, those of you who are watching, uh, it is didn't go very, very far, but it went actually about, uh, I would say, about half of a block there. Okay, so do you want to ramp up the speed a little bit, maybe? Maybe ramp up the speed, maybe up to like 0. 0.4, because that was, that was pretty slow. 0. 0.4, I like it, okay. We can keep it at one second right now, and then let's see what happens when we try it again. So we're going to reset uh, Zippy Clamps here, uh, back to the very beginning again, making sure that, once again, that I'm setting it at the same spot that I started at before, so that we can make sure everything is doing good. Sure. All right. So you feel ready? I think we're ready. Did all right. You, we all I have done here? to make our change is yeah. I've gone up in speed, and I haven't changed the time at all. Okay. So this awesome. is point four for the same amount of time. So let's see. Okay, that's really close. All right. So we, we actually did very good on that, but I think it went almost a little too far now. All right. At least if, if we're trying to make this one block, one block at, at a time. time. Okay. Now, we, of course, could try to make it just go two, but I feel like it would be nice to know that one unit, Well, I right? think, right, like in our, in our pseudocode, we have this sort of function of repeating, yeah. right? So wouldn't we want something that we know is going to be one block, and then I we agree. can just do that, just like we have on our pseudocode, forward, forward, turn, forward, turn. That would be super I think, nice. I think that would make it easier on the end, right? We're still going to have to figure out what each of these means, like yeah. our individual forward, forward, what is a turn? But mm -hmm. then once we have those, we can just copy paste them and move them in to the place, the order that we need. Makes sense to me. All okay. right. So we'll, I'll set zippy clamps back uh, towards the very start of this again. So one second, which is on the computer here, a thousand milliseconds, mm -hmm. was a little too long. I think it was a good speed, honestly. Okay. So why don't we try to work on setting that time now instead? Okay, what do you think? Uh, so it went maybe... Three quarters of a second? It made, I think it went like a block and a third. So hmm. three quarters of a second sounds about right. That'd be let's, let's, we can try 750 it. instead yeah. of 1,000. So yeah, we're t doing three quarters of a second or 750 milliseconds, right? Yep. Okay. So make sure that Zippy Clamps is all set to go here. And I'm set when you are. All right. Let's do it. Oh, that's, that's pretty much on point there. That looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so Zippy Clamps is doing pretty good here. Um, yeah. So we got ourselves maybe that one nice little uh, forward right. block. I think so we're now we know on that. that this guy is one forward. So I wonder if there's a way I can sort of group them. I bet you, if, can we build a function? I think we might be able to I do something like that. I think so. Now, we don't necessarily know how to but do that, I, but we can try. I'm a little scared. The trick is we can try and find out what happens, right? Right. So let's explore this together. I'll move Zippy Clamps back to the beginning again. And then why don't, why don't I come back up there and let's take a look at this whole function business. That that's what this guy is. Oh no, that's separate. Never mind. Control. Oh, <gasps> oh we're good. We're oh, good. you took everything. <laughs> I see what happened there. I was like, oh no. Sometimes you hit Control X yeah. instead of Control so Z. I, I, I think that was actually maybe right. Um, so, and the idea but is then that it wouldn't let me plug it in to. Because it'll be a separate function that'll sit outside of the main one, and then you'll run the function. Oh, uh, as a particular name to move, move forward, right? Actually, I'm going to do this the right way. Move forward. Camel case. <laughs> of course. Classic. I follow the instructions, man. Got to go for that for those nice templates. All, All right. right. So that's move forward. So what we're ha what's happening here, for those of you who are not familiar with programming, uh, the idea is that we are, is, since we know that we want the, the robot to move forward certain amounts of time every so mm -hmm. often, we also actually might also want to stop the robot in there then. Oh wait, no, I can't do that because then I can't put move forward in here. Uh, let's see, what would... So, like, we've made this move forward hmm. function, but now that I go how into do, the functions menu... How do we make it menu, do something like that? Where, where's that plus? I don't... Where, the plus? Uh, maybe try checking the linear op mode and see if... No? Call... No. Uh, so, go, yeah, go back to the function section again. Let's see. Functions. Um, 
run op mode. OK, yeah, let's see what that happens be, if we Where am I putting change? that here? Yeah, but I can't change that. We can't that. change anything on there, though. All right, I mean, OK, this may be a little over our head for this purpose. Maybe we, maybe we just know that this is what it is, and then we copy it. My inner conscience from, uh, from across the way says we should try to figure it out. But oh, we can, OK, we I can see your try. conscience. Yeah, we, 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 we could definitely, maybe we'll keep thinking about it yeah, I mean, while we, because uh, there's got to be okay, a good way to do on. this. We don't want to loop it. No. While you're looking through that, just as a, oh, that, nope, not, not quite. Because we, we do have those plus pieces that we can use there, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, that's actually just have the robot do math. So yeah. that's not on our list right now. Not necessarily yet. List with, so ooh, 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 no, that's not going to do what I want it to do. Uh, Let me I see. see. So tell you what, you know what, there's something <gasps> we can do? Ha, 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 ha. Well, so we can create lists with that. One Sorry, thing we could also potentially do is if we create this without a return. So there, I think there might be a oh, function that okay. allows us to do that without returning something necessarily. Uh, we also might want to bring that back because it had the stuff inside. There we go. Details. You got it. You're good. I just want to make sure before we lost that, uh, that piece there. So oh, this guy. That guy right there. And so then now we're going to take have, you. Yeah, put that in there. Excuse me. Thank you. Perfect. And now we're going to delete, delete that, you and make call that move forward. move forward. So, a nice part about uh, functions, folks, for those who ha haven't had the op opportunity to do things like this, the idea is hey, we have something that we want to do a whole bunch of times, right? Uh, and in those ways, it's really handy to be able to uh, have a short name, like a short name for yeah. that, as opposed to having to say it every single time. Well, like that. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's like quite this. literally the pseudocode that we created, yeah. which is hey, our program would just say move forward, move forward, turn, move forward, turn. That's what we're making here, but we're defining the robot actions that go into move forward. Right. And so, you know, if you want to think about it like if I said to my to like my mom when I was a kid, hey, could you make me a bowl of cereal? I don't have to say, hey mom, can you go to the kitchen and open up the cabinet door, <laughs> get a uh, bowl, uh, close the cabinet door, set the bowl down on the table, go open to the fridge, grab the milk, uh, close the fridge. You don't have to do all I of that. I really every hope time. that that's exactly how you asked for things as a kid was like in incredibly detailed sequential order. And probably that like breathless way of like and <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and then just running out of air each time. Yeah. And then could you get a spoon out of the drawer? And then could you put the spoon in the bowl? Like yeah. <laughs> Or you can just have a nice little shortcut and say, Make this is what this cereal. is. Right. Okay. And, I, it has, and you and I know exactly what all that means. Right. And and more importantly, our boy Clamps knows what that is, our Absolutely. robot that so we now, have called Now we just Clamps. have to figure out how to make move forward. What, did we so figure now that part out yet? I can take there move it is. forward, cool. and now it sits all right. there. There we go. Now Should we try this? Should we see if this does the same thing that we asked it to? We don't have to in reset him. I think we just have to say. In theory, we should run. be able to see this run, right? So let's uh, let me move over you there. Just you want to reset him? Well, I'll just I'll just make sure that I'm over here and that we also have time to switch the cameras we're over. We're keeping this. Him, we're keeping him safe. All right. All right. Good. Let's take a look here. And uh, yeah, go ahead and run. All right, we're gonna. Clamps. So now the block says just move forward, but we've defined move forward as the stuff we wrote before. And just like that, it moved exactly Perfect. the same way. That's so awesome. the really neat thing about great. that now is that we know we want to move forward twice, and I can just pull my move forward and put it twice. We yeah. might have to do it. Are we gonna have to do it more than twice? Because I don't know. What are you defining as moving a full block? Is it the front of the wheels? So I have the the frame of the robot here lining up with the okay. start of this line here. So that, gotcha. I think, is working pretty well for us so far. Um, we would have to move then one and then two, two to get up there, right? Yes. Before then we turn. Now, one thing I think we still might need to add into um, at least one section or not is eventually stopping the robot Eventually well. stopping, yeah. Because I think if we keep adding those pieces in, we aren't going to, I mean, I, I guess technically, if we tell it to uh, turn right, for example, it's going to change the speed again. Right. Do we want it to stop in between each step, or do we want it to just keep flowing from piece to piece? I think it would actually, mm, I think we probably want to be, mm, we can try it. Because I feel like if we, if we really want to save, save STEMI the fastest, we should not stop. But Fair enough. also, we need to be careful and make sure that our robot doesn't fall off the cliff. Because there's that cliff right there. It's yeah. True. yeah. So you know, let's let's see what we can do there okay. in terms of inputting stop. So that would be, we could I guess it would be set the power of the motors to zero. Yeah, we could even make a function for that oh. to set it to zero, so that we could then have a stop thing whenever we needed to stop. So a new function. And we could even test to see what happens if we have the stop in and when when, the, when we don't have the what stop. What is in. to stop moving? Then we would need the. We would need 
We also would need a, 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 a certain amount of sleep in there as well, otherwise it won't actually stop. Right, so we'd need a set power and a sleep. Yep. But we'd need set power to zero and then mm -hmm. sleep. I wonder, can we can we copy? Yeah, I was oh gonna say. boy, can oh we copy paste? Oh man, there we go. Now we're now we're cooking. And then do that. Now this might seem like it's a lot of work to start here, folks. But the tr nice part about this is if we make these functions for us, and we know that they reliably work for each individual thing that we're doing, then the rest of this is just a matter of putting in those blocks. Yeah. Easily enough. Forward, forward, or forward, stop, forward, stop, turn, stop, etc. Exactly. And I feel like we're. Telegramming, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Move forward, stop. <laughs> da, 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 yeah, yeah. So now we'll have move forward, stop moving. So I should get my stop moving function here before our turn? Yeah, I think so. Should we test it in between them to see if it actually stops for that amount of time, make sure we did it right? Sure, yeah. Now, I'm very big on test again. Uh, test testing again. <laughs> is a very important part of all this. We want to make sure that the tests do work uh, before we move too far forward. Otherwise, maybe you're like 30 steps in. You're like, wait a minute, where did it go Wait, wrong? Where did it go wrong? Yeah. And then you don't know. I I, <laughs> I have kids. We we build like mazes for Lego robots for the uh, for like the EV3s, mm -hmm. and they'll build an entire program for the entire maze nah, nah. first. They're like, wait a minute, this didn't work. I even take that in terms of whether it's for for code testing for a first tech challenge or first robotics competition or even testing a build function, right? Yeah. Oh, we built an arm that picks it up. Okay, well, it didn't work. Well, why? Did you open the claw? Okay, that for sure works, right? Then did you turn the wheels on? Okay, well, that's going the wrong way. That's why you didn't pick it up versus just saying, oh, it doesn't work at all. Not to mention, if you, if you look at the problem from such a big place, it looks impossible. But if you break it down into smaller into pieces, these smaller chunks, we got then it. it becomes a lot more, a lot easier to deal with, right? I like it. So awesome. I'm going to play this one, and it should move Stop for the same amount of time and then move again. All right, let me make sure that cl Zippy Clamps is ready to go. Zippy and I can't. <laughs> it's it, he's he's got a personality all his own for it's sure. Dutch. Yeah. It's Dutch. <laughs> okay. Zippy Clamps. Ready, go. So moves one, moves two. All right. Good. Now it's not necessarily perfect, of course. Uh, all we're depending on Nothing is. is the acceleration of the robot going forward and then stopping. Hopefully close enough. It looks like, you know, we did make it just about two here. Okay, cool. Um, maybe we want to increase the forward motion to like... What do you think, time or power? Let's see. So, yeah, every time we hit the stop, of course, it's, it's losing momentum. Yeah, he's sort of like those. jolting. But we're jolting forward and then stopping. I guess, what, what if we try to run it again, but we didn't have that stop in between the two Until he's motions. all the way where he needs and to go, because then we want to come to a full stop. And before then we turn. turn. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm so down for that. So why don't we that. try that? So we'll go ahead and set this back. Oh, oh, let's oh see. I've ruined it. We're oh, good. no. Before we make the turn, though, or bef we'll make the turn after this, but first, let's just test to see what happens when we go forward yeah. twice. Move, move, stop. So yeah. you've reset him? Uh, yep, looks good. All right. Bloop. I did not tell him to stop that time. D, we may have not saved the program. That would probably be it. Let's try that on and let's see what happens. You can this time. rely on me to change the code and not save it. Oh, same every time. <laughs> me. Uh, classic engineering blubber, blunder. Blubber. Blubber. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm blubbering about blunders. All right. All right. Good. Yep, I think we're all set to go. Two. Okay, so it looks so he's like... he's still stopping a little short. Yeah, it's Maybe interesting. Maybe we bump and it from 750 to like... Eight? eight? Not all the way to the 1,000, but like 800, eight, 850? Eight, let's try 850 and see if that changes things. Just on looked, the move. Maybe not the stop, right? Good on that. One thing also, too, and this is something that... Uh, did you guys measure this out when you uh, taped it Yes, down? we did. Okay, cool. So they are pretty much more or less the same size. That is something that I would not have done. <laughs> And then would be like here and be thinking, I, oh, I'm no. I'm going to say emphasis on the more or less. They are definitely not yeah. exactly the same size. But roughly, uh, we wanted to chart it out and we wanted to make sure that uh, it fit in the studio. So we were going to make squares and then we thought it might be too long. So they're 10 inches wide and 8 inches tall. Because here's something we'll have to think about too later on. And uh, <laughs> this, this will make this uh, particular challenge a little bit more daunting. But we, we can certainly work on it as far okay. as we want to work on <laughs> I'm it. I'm excited. Uh, the, we're, we're driving along rectangles, right? Which yeah. means that moving forward in one direction is not going to be one full square or one full space in, in one direction <laughs> as opposed to the other direction. So, so maybe that's there's gonna a... So going to be a different game that we'll play in a few minutes. In a, in, that'll be a bridge that we cross when we get to it, huh? All right, we've saved our op mode. <laughs> My consciousness from the other room is asking, who taped down the squares? Um... 
<laughs> but not in, someone in fairness, who should have thought about the problem. In fairness, the activity that we that you had to model off of it had rectangles, so it at the time it made um, perfect sense, right? I don't know if that's I, accurate. I, I think it, I'm pretty sure it did, <laughs> but in any case, it's totally fine. We're just. I like that. I like that the the voice in your ear decided to blame me for that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. So we have ourselves set to go. Let's see what happens now. 8.50. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Money. Yeah, that that's is good. Perfect. That was okay. very cash money of us. Yeah, so we have an, ourselves a really nice movement here, and now we're up to that cliff. But we don't want to go much further than we that. We don't want right? to go over the cliff. Don't want to, don't want to send zippy clamps over the cliff. No. That would be pretty bad. So now we need to figure out a turn. All right. So now, yeah, we just got to figure out how far we need to go, having one wheel go forward and then one wheel go backwards. So we backwards, should probably right? leave him so what are we turning we're turning right if we're him right now yes so that would mean that we need to make the right wheel go backwards and the left wheel yes. go forwards right i'm a very physical learner no like I, I, I do the to, same I, I always do what am i doing it's my thumbs i always i always point to the thumbs I'm like <laughs> that way that so way. we probably i want to just run this so maybe i can so just 850 by default because who knows right let's just see i want to Close these out. Oh, I see. So what you're doing right now? What, what are you doing right now? I Just would, so I if I were this. writing the code, I'd be commenting it out, yeah. right? And I'd be saying like, don't pay attention to this. But I'm just right clicking on this and saying disable. So, so there's a way to disable blocks without getting rid of them entirely. Right. So I don't want to so, delete it. So you'll have to grab a turn right. Yeah. Yeah, I need cool. to go over here. I love how they're they're like appearing as you make those functions. Yeah, I, think I love that. That's a really that. cool thing. So now if I run the program, even though the code still says all of the move forward and stop moving, it's I'm still including like just going to turn. It's right. It's only going to turn right because it's only listening to the thing we that says turn right. Definitely save before we run it. Nah. There we go. I don't know what you mean. So now if I hit it, let's see. I have a feeling this is going to be a really aggressive right. turn. Well, we're about to find out. Let's see. No, that was actually a really nice controlled turn, <laughs> honestly. I That looked pretty good. Okay. Well done. Well, I think we need to go further, right? So Yeah, it it kind of felt like what if, is the I feel like so we turned pretty well, but it feels like we didn't turn in place very much. No, not at all. I don't think we turned in place. I think we put one side, maybe we have oh, to. I see. So there, there is another issue too. What's that? That um, when we drove forward to those blocks yes. and it worked really well, we weren't centered on the block. Oh no, we did turn in place. We're we did just turn not in place, we're just block. not so centered on the block. So maybe we need to move yeah. forward a little more. Maybe we're not following this code exactly. Yeah. And it's gonna be move forward, move forward, move forward, maybe three or four times. Maybe right. I would say probably a third. And then turn. So sure. what I'm probably going to do is re-enable these guys. Okay. I'll meanwhile I'll reset Zippy over here. Enable. And then I'm going to add another move forward. Okay. And we'll see if that gets us far enough that our center, our middle of our robot is over the block so that when we do turn in place, yep. we we'll can... Also, we'll also probably need to turn or make the robot turn a little bit longer. Right? Yes. Yeah. And my brain wants to do that right now, but I also don't want to test two changes at once. Fair enough. I'm trying to do this. Yeah, we're trying to be good about the this right and way. making sure that <laughs> Instead we're of the impulsive way. unit testing, as they say, right? Unit testing, yep, precisely. Absolutely. All right, feeling good? Yep, feeling good. Let's take take a One, look here. Two, three. Looks pretty good. And then the turn. Oh, oh you know what? By the time it's finished, we're gonna have there, to suspend a little bit of our disbelief you know, here. <laughs> suspension as of disbelief at that cliff. As long as, as long as Zippy Clamps has some wheels on the ground, yeah, I we're think fine, is, right? if his, I'm thinking of this too much as like a you know rules nerd about first games, but as long as the robot is contained within the square that he's supposed to be on, we will make the assumption that that's the square that he's working right. on. Because, like we said, we taped the squares out before we knew what robot we were getting, so yeah, we'll call it good. So it looks like turn right is going to need more time. Yep. Right? I would say, so what, how much time do we have on it right that now? That was 850. 850 right now? Ooh, I think it needs more than a second, I'd say, because it's almost, like, it's like, 1250? What, like 60 degrees there as opposed to 90? Yeah, so, because if we doubled it, that'd be way, way too much. Way probably. too much. Maybe if we got, I mean, like, 1200-ish? Why don't we go 1250 if we're going like to go for these. those 50s? I like let's, these let's stick really with those 50s. even intervals. Yeah. That makes me very happy. Even I'm if not they may good not be at, like, oh, yeah, perfectly right. God, we'd be here all night. <laughs> 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 Which I'm sure people at home are having a wonderful stream. time with us. But... <laughs> I think you'd be you'd be pretty turned off by this if if we spent the next twelve hours like, all right. If this we got maybe if we went into nanoseconds for a little bit, yeah. and just, or microseconds, and try to really. I figure feel this like out. this is the part that 
is the root of all of the coding that we're going to be doing, but yeah. it's also incredibly tedious. And if we could put ourselves on fast forward, we probably would, right? Yeah. And one th one thing we would recommend, but that, that's part of the process oh, too, yeah. right? Because we're having fun with this. I'm having fun. And, that, and like trying to engage the, this problem and trying to solve it as you go along is part of that challenge. <laughs> Ninety percent of coding is yeah. just running it and hoping it works. And, and one thing too with a project like this for a, a robot like this is you wouldn't necessarily try to move in individual spaces so much right. as you would try to go forward a certain distance, turn at that interval. And that's an option that we have um, yeah. on a couple levels with First Tech Challenge. Uh, there's a lot of sensor work that we're not doing for the sake of time here, but right. uh, we can do things like make the robot go eight inches down the road. Um, so we could create, instead of making these move forward blocks of you know one at a time or one space at a time, we could say, go a guaranteed distance or right. go turn a guaranteed number of degrees. Um, but since those actually sort of come in the system, we're going to go through the learning process of running our code instead. So we've upped our time on the turn to 1250. Move just a little bit over for Zippy there, and Zippy seems to be ready to go. Let's go. Let's go Zippy Clamps. Going forward, stopping, and turning. Oh, that looks pretty good. It's I'm so not, close. I, I would say, what? Uh, I was joking about... 100 milliseconds? Okay, though? 100, like, do you think? Maybe 50. Maybe, maybe go right, for 13, a cool 1300. Let's go to a cool 1300. Cool 1300. All right, I'll save that if you reset him for me. Sure thing. And we will go for it. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Zippy clamps is set to go. Bloop. Going forward, then turning to the right. Ooh. If it's going to be 1350, I'm going to be so cranky. You th oh, so my, my consciousness tells me that I th that maybe wasn't completely, totally on that line to start. Oh, so let's go you ahead. Were, you were, you I was just set a it up little incorrectly. bit off. So let me, okay, we'll let try me it look again. from overhead here just to make sure that I'm really lining up this nice and I straight. I think the important part, too, is that like you made a really good point. right? When you're testing code like this or you're trying to get robot autonomous <clears throat> modes working, Consistency in setup is oh, so sure. important. In those instances, if you know what size of robot you're working with, it's nice also to like tape down those particular. Oh yeah, you gotta get uh, like a little. You're going. Like in all of the the fields, whether it's your first robotics competition or first tech challenge or even right. first Lego league, you have a robot starting zone, so it's a lot easier to say like, ah, yes, exactly this far into the zone. But right. we've sort of made up our own field here, so yeah, uh, we'll do. It. All right, so we're at 1300 and we're lined up better, so we're gonna try it again. Go for it. Going straight, going straight. Go, go, go. Turn. Come on, dude. Uh, it's it's, still, it still feels a little bit off, doesn't it? It does, but I, it's like. What if we went, wait, where are we at? 1300? 1300. Right what if we did 1350? All right, 1350. Just a little bit more. Because another thing, too, again, if as, long, as soon as we figure out this exact number, as then much. Then turn right's always going to be turn right. Exactly. And we can also then take the turn, or make that and turn left easily enough just by reversing the motors. The negatives, yeah. So yeah. one is going backwards, one is going forwards right now. To turn the other way, it'd be the other negative. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I think we're ready to go. OK. Let's see what happens. Driving along, driving Come along. Come on, dude. Oh, that looks I'm going to call that good. That is, that is looking nice, actually, I think. I'm going to call that good. So I then what do we really have? Nice. Now, this is a part where I actually think we can start to just sort of repeat blocks and put them in order, yeah, right? Because we're going to have, what, a move forward. Yep, and then we'll need a turn left, but we can just left. use the turn the turn right one and make ourselves and a new function yeah. that just reverses So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy paste our turn right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I have room to put him someplace. Sure thing. Take our turn right, and instead of calling it here. turn right two, we're going <laughs> to call it turn left, although that's precisely the kind of thing I would want to do to mess with my programming turn team would right be the sequel. instead of turn right and turn left, it's turn right and turn right two. Uh, that's exactly yep. sort of my brand. And once you get a chance too, if you could zoom that back in. Oh yeah, I'm going to zoom that back in for sure. But awesome. I just wanted to make sure we have all of our, I like to organize things oh, yeah. to it's a nice, fault. It's nice to have that kind of space. So we don't want to put it directly underneath the main program because we'll keep making that bigger. Right. So now I can zoom back in and we know we have turn left in our functions list, even though right. we're not looking directly at it. Now if we need to make any changes, no, we're not turning left yet. We need to go forward once and then so we'll we turn. We can go move forward. So theoretically, that should take us from where we are right now, or where mm -hmm. we ended up, forward one space, and then to the left. Absolutely. Now, do we want to uh, stop moving again? <laughs> turn right. Uh, <laughs> turn right, too, is the best turn left. If you do, but hey, if turn you do. Turn right, move forward, stop, turn left. Because we don't want to take any of his momentum, right? 
uh, yeah. from moving forward and like swing it into Try a to turn. Swing it. We want to stop it first. Before that way, we're going to get consistent turns. Yeah. Wow. Um, now it's feeling a little bit better. I'm not going to look at the way our teams do autonomous modes and be like, I don't know what's happening now. <laughs> I do know what's happening. Right? Now, if, if you know, turn right two may not work, but turn three right would work very well for us. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> turn right three. Just pull a That's full. True. You just pull a full zoom. You lander. don't need a turn. I thought it couldn't. Yeah, he can't turn left. That's correct. Yeah. So you don't need a turn left if you just do turn right three times. Yeah. So you could just have a turn right <laughs> three or repeat the turn right three times, and then you'd be all set to go, right? Yeah. Also, turn right two is exactly how when I do you know video editing stuff, I name like files. Like, oh yes, final. Final, really. Yep. Final ASDA is like <laughs> slam it, the keyboard. It bu I, I write curriculum and it bugs the educators who run it to no end that I'm like, final, final version two. Final, uh, final, final. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just have, end up looking for the newest one. But exactly. <laughs> Oops. Sort by date. Yeah. All right. Ready, buddy? Let's do there it. There we go. One, two, stop. Stop. Turn, turn to the right. Very Boom. nice. Hit him. Left. Boom. Okay, you know what? You know, I, th I think this is looking pretty good so far. Yeah, do you think we need to take him forward twice to cover that distance? Because, or are we okay with sort of knowing that we're vaguely on course? My nervousness about making it move forward twice is that what it... Uh, we'd well, overshoot? I think we'd maybe overshoot more than we're currently undershooting, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Um, we, could e we could make two different versions of go forward if we want. Uh, to cover like in two different it. ways. I think it's okay for right now. I think it's good because we're going to turn again. Mm -hmm. I mean, we basically... Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's see what happens when we put two forward. Yeah, let's right. try just, it. Just to see what happens. And if, if we like it, great. If we don't, it's just a matter of I removing the block. I also want to put a stop in between turn right and move forward. Because yeah. we definitely cut that turn a little bit short. You're right. So we'll let it drift a little bit first before <laughs> I think you... Clamps is having issues staying between the navigational buoys. Absolutely. Yep. It's okay, though. Clamps, Clamps we, had a long trip to Planet X. He's had a long trip into space. So turn right, stop moving, move forward, move forward, stop moving, turn left. All right. <sighs> Saves as good as any. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it, you have to hit the button twice. There we go. Let's go. Turn. Come on. Looking good so Stop. far. See, what? yeah, I, I see what you mean about overshooting too far. But, but I think that's okay. I, th I think honestly. Well, I think we're, we're gonna come back and and hit that corner anyway. Yeah. So now we probably need what three, three forwards. Three forwards. Yep. And a stop. Yeah. Okay. Three forwards and a stop. One, two, three. Oh, I gotta stop after our turn left as well. So. All We're right. gonna go function, stop. Good old Ziggy clamps back. Yeah, you you reset them. Yep, making sure he's and all set to go. I'll get our new set of processes in here. Sure thing. <laughs> Wouldn't left be turn right three? Yes, but when you copy and paste <laughs> the blocks, uh, I'll show you what I mean. When you take a function and you just wholesale copy the whole thing, it just it makes turns a into new version. turn left to two. Yeah. So I was gonna keep turn left listed as turn right two. It's not a it's not a number of times you repeat yeah, the function. It's it was just, just turn right the sequence. Uh, like you know when you download the same picture twice and it's like right. image one. There we go. That's what we got. That's All right. what's going on there. I've saved our thing. So now I've added. We've turned left there, and we're on this second straightaway. I've put in three more move forwards and then a stop, but I haven't put in the turn yet. So we should, we should be able to make it to the end of this second sort of longer piece. Right. And we did have victory spins during our uh, our teleop portion. So what maybe we'll do a victory spin once we've saved uh, STEMI as well. We'll pick up the block or get it, you know, clear the area, and then we'll just. I was say, make loop. sure we clear the area so we don't run over <laughs> STEMI as we'll we're just, doing our victory we'll spins. We'll just party it up when we're done over here. <laughs> All right, so we think we're done. All right. Um, and I have to hit play on the code, or mm -hmm. else it won't run. Surprisingly enough. Just running along, right. doing all right. Turn. So far, so good. A little too far forward, but we're calling That's it all okay. right. Because it, 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 it's it kind of yeah, corrects, it corrects on the itself turn. by the turn. Yeah. All right, maybe we take one of the forwards out there. I think that's too uh, far. Well, what, what, what would what would happen if we turn left? Then I think it'll look okay. I think it's gonna look all better right. if we turn. Then you want to try it? Yeah, because I, I, I think we made the same mistake last time too. True. Like, True. Oh yeah. Well, we need to be a little bit further back. But as soon as it makes that turn, it's gonna kind of re uh, realign itself a little bit more. <laughs> turn right too. Totally subverted my expectations <laughs> by turning left. 
<laughs> 10 out of 10 sequel. Thank you. <laughs> what a twist. Oh my God. Thank what you, chat. You are, you are making the, the tediousness of repeating code very fun. So thank you. We love you very much. Just when you thought it was going to turn right, it turned turn left. left. <laughs> All right, let's go. Genius. Oscars. <laughs> IGN 12 out of 10. <laughs> we'll turn again. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, come on, buddy, nice come and straight. On. Come on, let's make a nice left. left turn here. See, that looks pretty good. See, that finished almost exactly straight. That's uh, perfect. Provided that the tape is reasonably close to yeah, straight. Yeah, you know, it's. So it's then, good. all right, forward stop. Then right. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try to do this. Why don't we do two moves on this one? Two forwards? All right, no, one one forward and then just go stop and then turn right stop. Okay, so we've turned left. We're going to stop moving, then we go forward, Yep. and then we're going to stop. Yep. And then that's what we're testing? Sure. Yeah. Or do you want me to add more? It's just up to you as to what you want to, what you want to. Uh, oh, that's right. Question. I forgot about that, though. Yeah, these are longer blocks, or the longer uh, yeah, rectangles. Yeah, it's longer So we in that should direction. do two forwards. Uh, wouldn't it be established to, better to establish one square unit front and back and what the pivot for the rectangle would be? That's what we're trying to do. Uh, that's what we've done. I'll zoom out really quick over here and we've got four basic functions that we're sort of including. So we've got our um, move forward, which is to move forward a set amount of time at a certain power, uh, turn right and turn left, and then a stop. Um, they're not, it's just not entirely consistent, but also right. that might be because you guys can see the camera at an angle. The blocks are not actually square. No. So if you were looking at them from our perspective, uh, they're actually rectangles. So it's not exactly consistent from um, one direction or another. Right. So that's something we're going to do. Uh, it looks like we're okay to uh, try again if we yeah, want. Yeah, give me one sec here. I lost connection oh, well. to, my, to my consciousness for a moment here. Oh, so no. I'm going to set up we Ziggy here the, for a second, uh, and the then voice. we're going to let that run while I try and fix that. Uh, give me one second All here. All right. Yeah, we can, uh, there. Yeah. we can run this guy. Let's see what happens now. All righty. Let's see. Oh, that's not where I go to start the program. There we go. Turn forward. All right, I got you again. Turn forward. I think that's a little too far. Oh, but the, no, because oh, then no, it turns. It's then it's okay. Forward. And then I think that might be good because then we'll probably. Turn to the right, and that'll. Are you doing each block would be forward times three, then pivot left, then forward? Uh, so sort of the way that it looks here in the code, which I think they can switch us over to, is like I said, we've we've made these individual uh, blocks. Of, Functions over time, yeah. Right, function of you know move forward, move forward. So when we say it's a it's roughly a block, but again, since it's not, um, it's roughly a block in the what I would call the main direction, like yeah. north south of the course. Uh, so when you, but we've, there's a little bit of adjustment since they're not precisely even. Um, <laughs> you need one of these kids to terrify the dog with. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Yeah, honestly, I think that would work pretty well. Oh yeah. Um, this could easily scare off any, any dog, any cat. Yeah, that's, that's the theory that we're going for, uh, Lanthios, is we're, <laughs> we're trying to create this, these separate functions that will, you know, accomplish one block. So what we did in an earlier activity uh, for, um, a younger age group is that we actually made, and I think they might be able to uh, sort of switch this up and, and show it a little yeah, bit closer. Yeah, let's take a little bit closer to that if we can. Um, is we made some, it definitely went up there. There, there. we go. We uh, did an activity that's meant more for, you know, younger students starting in fourth grade uh, where we did pseudo code. So we did this exact activity, but we took it from the mindset of, I'm not going to write any code, just what blocks do I need to move forward, move forward, turn. So we're basically taking this concept, but turning it into actually, you know, block-based programming. Right. Uh, can we purchase a class pack even if you're not with an educational institution? That's a fantastic question that I would I'm, love I'm, to hear. My guess is that absolutely yes, because yeah. uh, you know there are a lot of instances, uh, for example, I work at a museum. Yeah. It's not a traditional classroom setting, but it is a form of informal learning right. uh, that you could definitely do, right? If you have like a 4-H club or yeah. a, an after-school activity or maybe uh, something that's off of a school campus entirely but still deals with kids getting excited about robotics and things sure. of that nature. Absolutely, yeah. I think um, the class pack specifically is more meant for 
a teacher with a large group of students. So for example, First Lego League is up to 144 students in one pack. Right. Um, there's more information at firstinspires.org slash hour of code. Uh, but there's definitely you know kits and and you can participate in in first in a number of different ways. So I think there's there's got to be a solution for you, and we will figure it out for sure. Uh, but yeah, to your question, uh, the the concept here is to create a, a function, for example, move forward that is roughly a block. Now mm -hmm. we're human and we're playing with it sort of on carpet where the blocks aren't perfectly even. So we're getting close, uh, and we're doing a little bit of adjustment based on you know when we test it out. Is our move forward going to address the exact length of the block. Right. Also, it should be mentioned, too, in addition to buying the uh, the class pack itself, you can also just buy the robot kit. Yeah, if, absolutely. If, if you are uh, someone, like you said, who wants to buy something very nice for their niece, who's very excited about getting them into robotics, but you don't necessarily need to lead an entire classroom, you can still buy the equipment on this. Uh, the class pack will help you learn how to kind of help your niece along with it. Yeah. But if you if you think your niece is jumping into it, you can certainly do something like that. I would have to say, uncles that get nieces into technology and robotics are the coolest uncles. Super good I don't, stuff. Uh, I'm not biased or anything, but you uncles know, and aunts. Yeah. Un uncles and aunts who get people into robotics would be the coolest. Yeah. So, all right, we ready to try one more time? So we've adjusted it to, I want to say that. Corner, the so the we, we did two forwards there, is that right? Oh, we were adding a forward. That's yep, I got distracted by chat. So excited it's to talk still about a class stream. packs. It's still a stream. Still so a when stream. you get distracted by chat, that's what I mean. Awesome, great. Well, I'm glad we could find the solution for you. Yeah. Ready, set, let's go, buddy. Come here we on, go, come on, here come we on. go. And stop, and then turn to the right. Then go forward, zippy clamp. Turn to the left. Yeah, this is where we say it's not perfect, but but it's it's very pretty close given the size and of uh, and constraints of this robot. And I think it, it yeah, considering we didn't know the robot we were gonna get. Now this turn I'm a little concerned about because I'm not sure this turn is gonna. Well, let's, if we turn, we're gonna overshoot. I think. Let, let's find out. Let's just try it out and see what happens. Where's coming? So that's a right can. turn. Yep. So let's let's give it a shot and see. Don't mind me, a grown uh, woman checking left and right <laughs> on her fingers. Don't for worry, I do the same right. thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. That this turn almost needs to be like a backwards pivot. Yeah. Right. Like well, it well, comes to this corner, and it almost again. I'm like a very. <laughs> every time I every time I think this is going to work, though, the turn actually does end up working. Okay. That's true. It's so some we'll, of the turns. Let's just see what happens with it. And, yeah, and, and if I think the it. solution, if it doesn't is that we take that second move forward out, and then if we know the turn's going to curve too far forward, It'll be close enough. then we'll take that move forward yeah. out. Yeah. So let's, let's give it with, the, right. with the two move forwards, but let's see what happens. All right. Give me one second here. I'm just going to double check. Is he all good? Right. I think the zippy clamps is all right. All right. Let's go, buddy. Then to the right, Whoop. forward, then to the left, forward, then to the left again. That's such a good turn right there. I love it. <laughs> such a, and it's then, like a. Oh, oak. see, that looks really good it's, right there. Yeah, see? I think since we have a robot that's bigger than than the bounds of the boxes. Yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, is this Scratch? If you talk about the language, no. It's it's, it's Scratch like it's, though. It's Scratch. If you if you've ever done anything that has. Or like Scratch has those nice drag and drop yes. blocks, and just like Scratch, uh, it has a lot of the similar kind of build up to it. But it is specifically built for the purpose of working with the First Tech Challenge Correct. robots and uh, equipment, which is yeah. Nice. This is specifically for First Tech Challenge uh, to create the robots, and in our case, uh, the robots like what you're going to get in a First Tech Challenge class pack. Again, there's links below, um, but uh, this is actually it's it ends up being Java, so you can kind of see if I make this other screen bigger again, that as I move these blocks around, it's actually creating um, Java code out of what I drag into the blocks. And a, and a cool thing about that, too, is that all this is running directly off of the controller on the robot. Like, yes. this, isn't, this isn't like a separate program that you're running. Right. It's instead a website that the essentially the controller on there is running that you can access from any device that has right. a web browser that can connect directly to this. Yeah, so it's super accessible, right? Yeah. So, uh, the robots run on what's called Wi-Fi Direct, um, and we're we're sitting there and saying, okay, I'm connected to that brain of the robot. What programs are here, and how can I edit them? Right. All right. So, so we, we liked that. Yep. I think we just need to maybe move one forward then. Okay. Just based on where the wheels are. Stop moving. Move forward. Oh, I gotta work on this. Teeth. Figuring out how we zoom in because. <laughs> 
one day I will I will figure. Yeah, it's it's, it's block programming for First Tech Challenge. Yep. And that's the the cool part is even if you're not you know a super experienced coder that you can get a robot working in what. An hour? Yeah. That we've been running this. Yes, yeah. and like <laughs> for and neither of us, mode? neither of us had a lot of experience with this prior, but nope. we at least had a, we had a basic idea of how to program. But yes. like we we were given a walkthrough of how to use this software and connect to the robot and yeah. basically what things were. But, the but fun beyond part, that, we haven't really programmed. A the robot. fun part about this too, though, is that like um, if you have say younger kids or yes. kids who are not very experienced with this. If you don't want to have them have to deal with having like those particular like motor move for this speed for this time, yeah, you can instead have the situation where like instead you just make the functions for the kids themselves. So that way right. uh, you can just have like already built into the program like oh a function that makes them move forward to the left to the right depending on what they need to do. That way they can actually have an ability to keep these things controlled best they can without necessarily having to worry about like. Oh, I, how, what speed does this need Right, to be? exactly how much power am I giving the motors? So I yeah. think we're ready to test okay. getting to the end of the course. Do you, think, uh, do you think it's one forward or two forward? I'm starting to second guess myself. Let's try one forward. Yeah, and then that seems good. And then I think probably that next turn will sort of like make it around. We'll even it out, because those turns we're are getting magical, next, We're swear. getting up to the part that's a little bit scary for me, yeah, which is the block. Yeah, because we, we don't want to run over poor... Uh, our, our guy, <laughs> Stemmy. Our, our, Poor Stemmy. He's been through enough today. We've, yeah, he we've really, really heard him been, a couple times. Also, he's been trapped underneath that block for a while. For it's yeah, like, you know, like an hour. Why? Why? Why do you have to keep pulling him back? If you could already go out to collect <laughs> he's like, zippy clamps, he can like, hear the robot coming for him, and he's like, "Come on, man!" And then it just goes back. It's like, what? Couldn't you just walk? Couldn't you just me? do the next step? All right, we're getting there. All right, All one. Right, this clamps. is with one forward one to get forward to the end to of the get course. To the end. Sure. So here we go. Moving along. It made a noise at me. What made a noise at you? Is it running the, out of battery? Phone. No, it it's there's a, a function that we're not using that it says there's a problem. Uh, I think the um, color sensor might be uh, off of alignment or off, something. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so then All we're right, moving to turn. the right. Move forward. Ooh, I think maybe we need maybe one more forward in there. I think we do too. Yeah. Because then the turn will sort of bring overshoot, it back. but then it'll bring it back to where it is. Yeah. yeah so. You're not wrong. You're so not why, wrong. Why don't we? Since I think we have a pretty good idea of that. Why don't you add one more forward and then add the right? Yeah. Forward stop. Turn stop. Yep. I turn think we'll be set right. On that. And then then we'll get into the into the really interesting bit of trying to get this block off of poor Stemmy. All right. Yep. And make sure we stop before the turn too. Yes. We uh, move forward. Then so move forward twice. Then stop. Then right, and then stop. stop. Right, stop. Okay. We're getting there. We're making progress. I'm, We're doing I'm great. Dragging and dropping to the best of my ability. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I think we're set to go. If you want to run, All right. go Come zippy on, clamps. Go zippy clamps. There we go. Forward. Then left. Forward. Left again. Forward. Then right, a <laughs> little bit more. Nice right turn there. Oh, Whoa. that's nice. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, Whoa. That's really good. And that is. And that is my battery. All right. So in the meantime, while uh, yep, while we're getting set up over there, I think yeah, all we have to do pretty much. Well, you know, what we have to do now is we have to actually work on getting ourselves set up on the the clamp actually moving. We still need to make sure that it moves down and that we have the ability to control the clamp to open up and close, right? Mm -hmm. Either that or we have to just joust it off of, uh, off of STEMI, which is an option for what it's worth. We could close the claw and then just push it sort off of if shove we it. want to. So, uh, in fact, that sounds like an excellent idea. So why don't we go ahead and try to do that? I'm gonna close this uh, the mouth here yeah, manually there. I think that's about then, as far as we can go closing it. Do we want to just start with it in position so we just have to yeah, drive it Yeah, the right up? height. So that way we don't actually have to worry about that clamp at all. All we have to do is just make sure that we don't <laughs> impale STEMI as we're going along here. I so love that that's, that's somehow a priority. It is a priority for me. So we are we, sure here's the thing, safe. from my side I can see that his arms are holding the block in yeah. place. So we might need to go forward and then turn, right? So it might be, lower that just a little bit if it'll yeah. go. Well, maybe like right there. And then we might have to sort of. What happens if we just push this? Yeah, because that'll push STEMI right there. Well. <laughs> Do we make a little I mean, command that's like drive a half a second and back up? I mean, if we push it a little bit, eventually it'll pop off of STEMI, right? And yeah. That's we could true. also, we, if, let's pretend STEMI was super heavy. 
Yeah. What if we tape Stemmy to the ground so that way uh, Stemmy doesn't move in the process of this? That is possible. All little fixes that you can do. I think there's a little do. tape on that table next to you. There it is you. right there. All right, All we'll tape Stemmy down for the purposes of experimentation. For this, this, this simulated situation where we're trying to save a poor robot from an existence of being crushed under a block, uh, we can definitely do little things like, like tape down Stemmy. <laughs> Well, I mean, it wouldn't be good testing if we, you know, if we were pushing them all over because theoretically this is like a, you know, space exploration robot. I would assume it weighs a few pounds. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that to Stemmy. I just, I was <laughs> gonna have to his put his over face. his face and I'm like, it's like an old That's timey old cartoon cruel. with people yeah, like, stuck to the railroad tracks, like, a, like, like a snidely whiplash, like. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, we'll, we're going to tape down his legs. Another thing that's important about this too, and this is actually a bit more like towards as you set this up for like a classroom or something of that nature, you want to make sure that the end goal is very consistent. Yeah. If STEMI were to move around a lot, that would make things very difficult for yourself so that you wouldn't be able to know exactly where you need to stop each time. You know what you could do that secures him without being uh, harmful to Mr. <laughs> Robot Friend? Hmm. Is you could do that double-sided roll of tape. You know how you like roll oh, it back on something yeah, and then put it at the totally. back of his head and then stick him down to it. Yep, I will do that as well. I think that's a that's a much we'll more humane solution this. for our robot friend. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm gonna get a big old roll here. I'm gonna just spin this up. There you go. Yeah, and just like help him help him stay down. I think yeah. that'll help us be consistent about getting it's, the block without bringing STEMI with it. It's like a nice little robot pillow is what's going on there. <laughs> he just He's taking a nap. We're making yeah. him very comfortable where he is. Okay, so I think we're just about ready to actually test this thing out again. Okay. So I'm gonna bring this back here. Do you think here. after we've made that turn, you wanna say it's two forwards for now? Because we may have to make an individual separate forward for that last we gap. We might have to. So do you think probably, two forward or do you wanna just go, go Gonzo and go for the three? Um, what are you feeling? Let's try two and see how close it gets us. Okay. And then if it's really not that close, we'll try a third. Sure thing. And if it's like some weird interval in the middle, we can make a custom forward. Sure which thing. I think will probably help fill the gap and also be a new piece of code rather than just using the same function over and over again. Sure thing. Which might not be so and bad. Also grab my tape out of the way so we don't run over that in the process. But I really love the way that we set this up. Like this was probably the... I wanted to quit and try something else, and yeah. you were like, no, let's keep going. Yeah. I'm glad we figured out how to do these sort of functions for turn right and move forward. Because that would have been madness. Imagine otherwise. having to write this every single time, and then how big that piece of code would have been to see, like, power, sleep, power, sleep, power, just over all of these versus but, our very yeah. clean sort of, like, move forward, move forward, stop. Like, I, I definitely think, one, it connects a little bit better to our sort of activity for younger students, but also it just makes this a lot simpler. Um, and I like when coding is simple because this kind of stuff is for everybody. And, and, and yeah, not to mention with that too, like uh, when you have to go back and change things. Oh yeah. Uh, like we could even take it one step further if you wanted to, and you can do this as you're working with this sort of stuff too, is making sure that you also have the ability to put in comments at different sections. Yes. You can say like, we this, is, be this is straight, <laughs> or this is forward move one. Right. This is the first turn, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you could really see exactly where each of these things are happening. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. This should get us pretty close to Stemmy. Let's see this here. Dun, 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 dun. Going dun, along. Dun, 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 dun. Hold on, Stemmy. We're on our way. We're coming. I wonder if I if I didn't orient it exactly. Well, come on, this Stemmy. Is pretty good. Come I also on. like that we just barely missed Stemmy the, on the first swing there. <laughs> that's good. That's it's good. Like, I feel like it, that's a little bit cheating. That is if cheating just, a little like, bit. Swipe yeah. it away. Uh oh. Nah. It's good. fine. We're just gonna break through the backdrop. Ooh. Wait. Uh, we what? Didn't save. Yeah, we probably need to save no, again. No, I saved. You saved. I swear I saved. Interesting. I don't know. I probably didn't save. Is it still running save. the program? I probably didn't save. <laughs> Fair. I'm like, no, well. I did it. I likely didn't. <laughs> I probably didn't do it. It's, Let's that's blame the human, not the program, because if we're being honest, I'm I'm the reason that it didn't get saved. If there are any Lego or uh, first Lego League mentors out there, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. I totally hit the download button. I totally hit it. That's why it didn't work it's like, at and all. And that's that's why it's not on the brick, like at <laughs> all. I totally hit that's it. That's so accurate. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. So I've definitely <laughs> saved it because I've hit it at all least right. four times now. Yeah. Let's see this since in action being now. called out. Yeah. <laughs> The nice part about hitting a save button is you don't have to worry about it hitting multiple times because it'll do it the same thing each time. No harm in extra save. You, you hope that it's doing the you same hope. thing every time. Yeah. All right, we're getting close. Come on. Turn to the right. A little poke on the edge there. <laughs> a little poke. 
Move forward. Oh, move forward. Oh, <gasps> shoot. We might be okay. doing it too far. I think it's just one. I bet if, if well, I have it, a feeling it's one and turned, and then it like swoops it away. That's fair. Yeah, actually, you it's know what? You're right. Because then, swoop. Swoop, then we can just slap it off, and that'd be the end. Yeah. We're so close. All right. So we've deleted so our other move this. forward. I had it here, and then I'm just going to click and hit delete. Yeah. So let's try it with just move forward before we turn, because I'm worried we're going to impale our buddy over here. I hope that people in chat are ready to clip the crap out of I thought of this. you were going to say, I hope that we do. <laughs> I was like, wow. I always slime Stemmy You're really right in the not face. here for Stemmy today. <laughs> no. You spent too much time with Stemmy, and now you don't want to. No, we, we, need like, we need like celebration music when this happens. Just like. I know. Just like Ode to Joy playing in the background, <laughs> fireworks yes. blasting Actual out. fireworks over our complete uh, did, we, did we add the turn in there? No, we're going to try it without, so we don't slap him in the face. Or you hope we slap him in Fair the face. Fair enough. So either way, either way. Yeah, make sure, let's, let's make sure we save, and I then we'll be... That feels direct. That, that, that was, that <laughs> let's was, make sure we that save. That was not me, by the way. That was oh, <laughs> our, okay. our, our consciousness I in the see. other room. Our consciousness in the other room yes. telling me that I need to save. All right, here we go. All right, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So this Looking is with good. just one move forward. Yep. So we're gonna see what happens here. And uh, you know, it, I've I've said it a few times now. The temptation is always to just try to do more than you really need to do, but you really should only test one thing at a time just to make sure that everything's working okay. Well, because if I added sluggish. the turn. Let's see. If I'd added the turn, Ooh, I think if good. we turn, we're gonna hit it. I think we're gonna hit it too. All right, so now we know that we're going to get there. Yep, now we just need to turn what? to the right. right. Yeah. Turn to the right. But the temptation is always like, oh, yeah, it's totally, it's totally going to work for me on that first yeah. try. I just need to go ahead and do it. But then you find out that like something doesn't work, and you don't know, have that unit test that you wanted to make sure it actually that previous step worked before you jump on the next thing. Absolutely. So and then now you don't we've know what got broke it. a whole chain of all of our turn rights, move forwards. And at the very end, what I've done here is we tried two move forwards, didn't work. We tried one, it gets really close, and now we've added a turn right. And All I right. think that's going to be I think this might be, be it. it. Yeah. So we're going to hit save. We're going to hit save again, and we're going to hit save again. Just won't, so just, I don't just get called case, out. Just in case. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on. Come on, zippy clamps. You got this. I'm so excited. I this, believe in me. <laughs> I believe, believe in, in you. I believe in you, buddy. Believe in the me that believes in you. <laughs> here we go. Okay. See, but here's the thing. Like, having been in first programs for so long, like, this is the joy. If this oh, yeah. works, this it's going to have made my triumph. week. You go out for pizza after this kind of thing. Come on. <gasps> yeah, we, we did, did it. it. It happened. Yes. Yeah. Woo. We Where's the confetti? We got celebratory music in the studio. Libby, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. We made it happen, and I'm, I couldn't be happier. We did it. We did it. We saved Semi. We saved him we in the pseudo code exercise for younger students. Absolutely. And we saved him in the first tech challenge activity. Yeah. So I think he's like, is he done? Are yeah, we done I'd hurting Stemmy today? We succeeded in, in saving Stemmy. Stemmy's looking great down here. I don't know what you're talking about. I still tape to the floor, but you know that. That's but we can undo the tape. Yeah, the, 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 the tape is fine. You know what? I'm gonna I'm actually gonna celebrate by All right, saving Stemmy. All right, he should Stemmy join here. us up yeah, here. We're, we've absolutely. saved him. He's free of the block. Here we go. He's, he's got a little covering you know what? tape. He's got a new style. Is what he's got he's going got on a new there. Outfit. So he's doing great. I love it. Well, I mean. We did it. We, we, we succeeded, <laughs> which, you know, we, we set ourselves up in ways that may have made it more difficult than it needed to be. But you know what? Fair. The important thing is that we stayed, uh, we stayed on target. We try to make sure that we're working through this. Um, actually, I think something would be interesting because we're, you know, we're still kind of uh, speaking towards teachers on this. Yeah. What sort of, uh, if you've ever dealt with this before, especially with kids trying to work through mm -hmm. like a uh, challenge like this, what sort of challenges do you think come up when it comes to dealing with kids trying to get through something like this? I think with students working with an activity like this, especially if it's in the case of, you know, it's at camp or it's in a class or something, there's this level of, you know, inside of the group, making sure that every voice gets heard. Yeah, for that's sure. That's something that's really important to, to me with my students is, you know, you could have five kids or 100 kids and you want to make sure that everybody's being able to contribute. Um, what I love about sort of these activities is that there's dedicated group sizes so that you make sure you're, you're meeting an appropriate, you know, curriculum for those students. But I think the other thing is 
it wouldn't be a first class pack without first without it, the first core values, right? Of so course. we've got our gracious professionalism, meaning that we treat everyone in our group with respect. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I'm. Sometimes you get activities that are geared at young people, and it's like, blah, like all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I I really like that. In addition to sort of getting the the technical knowledge, you're actually sort of getting that first culture and that first backbone yeah. of okay, you're working in a group and your job as a teammate is to make sure all of your teammates feel included. I love that that first places emphasis on being an inclusive community. So to go back to your question about classroom, sorry, I just get excited <laughs> about first. <laughs> That's um, not a bad thing here. Is I, I think there's a level of making sure that the students in the group feel like they're all contributing. Yeah. Um, and I think we did a good job of that. I think we, we each had our job and we did it and we, we nailed it. We dude. did, absolutely. I had the best teammate for our hour of code activities but today. But as I was saying, one other thing about that too is that when someone wants to give up on something, also, <laughs> you know, because sometimes you're like, ah, it's just too hard, I just don't want to do it. Motivation sometimes really gets kids on stuff like this. I, I know that for a fact. <laughs> like, Same. and I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen it plenty of say, times too. Both like, with students, and yeah. I did it today, right? I mean, we were talking before the show yeah. about how we're both not super versed in programming. Right, you know, at, least, at least in this sense. Yeah, and for something sure. I thought I, that I know we, we talked about was really important is that you can, okay, we're, we're both new to this. We don't know yeah. what this is, but we're not going to give up. Mm -hmm. Even if we didn't rescue STEMI at the end of today, we would have tried, right? At least yeah. we tried, we gave it our all. But also, this has, I was actually worried this is going to be a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think we got to a point where we understood that, like, this was a challenge but that doesn't mean we back away from it. And I think yeah. that's something that's really important is your teammates are there to motivate you. I was gonna give up on functions, but yeah. functions made this so much easier. Um, I think that's that's really a key part of it, right? Is that whether it's you're a brand new coder or you're trying a new language for Hour of Code for a computer science education week, whatever activity you're doing is just, you know, there's no reason to back up. We, right. You can get it. It only takes, well, it took us a lot longer than an hour, but. If you're doing one hour of code this week, at least you will have gained something really, really positive and really, really cool out of it. And I, I like that. I think we were both really nervous <laughs> about it. Now that we finished it, we can admit to that. It feels very, I, I, I admit it at the very beginning. We didn't yeah. know what we were doing It feels good it. to have it right, that, though. That's the point, yeah. And, and so, uh, especially, too, as an educator, like, making sure that as your kids are going through this, sometimes, you know, and not necessarily you as an educator yourself, but uh, they've been told in other places that if they don't do well at something, that it's something that they shouldn't do. Nah. Like, we, it's just one of those things where you have to keep motivating and keep uh, stringing along, have those little victories where oh, you yeah. can. Like, when we got a good turn, like, celebrate those moments. Absolutely. When you, and when you get to the end, Make a party out of it, like <laughs> the, the Price of Right music playing in the background <laughs> there as we're like, yeah, we did it. And just making sure you kind of have that moving for yourself. So uh, just kind of wrap up things here. Uh, so what what were we doing all this for again? What, what was? <laughs> what were we doing? I'm for? just I'm just one with zippy clamps over here. Besides and I, a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it's been really nice to celebrate Computer Science Education Week mm -hmm. with our Hour of Code activity, which has turned out to be quite a few hours, but all <laughs> we good had hours. We had a great time with it. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean the idea here, right, is if we're we're interested in computer science or we're, or mm -hmm. trying to get young students interested in computer science and coding, um, the whole point of Hour of Code is just. Give it a try yeah. for one hour, and you'll never know what you could possibly learn or what new skill you could pick up. Um, and whether you're, again, someone experienced or someone brand new like us, uh, you're going to be able to make something awesome. And the worst thing that can happen with it, too, is that you just learn a little bit more about how coding works. Like, <laughs> it, like you if just spend an hour careful, messing around with it. you just might learn something. Oh, no. We can't have that, can we? I don't know. That's the real. That's the real kind of play with first, right? Though, is that like you? You are doing so many cool and interesting things that you just never really feel like you're learning until you look back. It's like, wow, I really have a lot of skills that I never had before. Uh, kind of playing that out. Absolutely. And so, yeah. Uh, once again, if you want to check out the uh, class packs that we were talking about, uh, you can check them out at firstinspires.org/hourofcode, and that goes all the way from fourth or four-year-old kids all the way up to. Uh, 12th grade. So yeah. you, there's a wide range of programs that you can use for this in order to get kids excited. It doesn't have to be very high tech sort of things like this. This is for the older kids. Uh, you know, for the younger kids, you can work on things as small as six Duplo. Like yeah. that's that's really what it comes down to. I mean, the first class packs, again, like you said, anywhere pre-K through 12th grade. And from a, an educator's perspective, you don't have to worry about the curriculum planning. First has put all of the resources there for you, whether it's engineering notebooks, meeting guides, any of that. Um, 
And again, we've got First Lego League Junior Discovery Edition for our youngest. That's pre-K through first grade. Uh, we've got First Lego League uh, grades two through four. First, or, I'm sorry, First Lego, Lego League Junior, junior yep. grades two through four. Uh, and then First Lego League grades four through eight. Uh, as well as our first tech challenge, which is appropriate for middle or high school students. And again, we've we've done a, a little bit of each thing. We started uh, with some dis first Lego League Junior Discovery Edition, uh, you know, our, our six bricks challenge with animals, and then we've also done some first tech challenge with uh, with Clamps the robot, and and our little oh, STEMI and program our too. And code with STEMI works, works well for kids in between, especially like anywhere from like middle late to mid middle to late elementary school, all yeah. the way up to high school. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, just not something that kids may not have tried before. Totally depends on your experience level. But I think what's really key about this week specifically, about Computer Science Education Week, and first culture in general, is that STEM is for everyone. So no matter mm. who you are or how old you are or what your ability level, uh, there's, there's FIRST programs and there's Hour of Code programs for you. So definitely make sure you check out our resources at firstinspired.org slash Hour of Code. Um, and if you're interested in the, the first program itself, actually, we're going to have a little video here for you in a second here just yeah. to kind of show off the different programs. But in the meantime, we are going to be signing ourselves off here for today. Uh, thank you for ha hanging out yeah. with me and like <laughs> working through all this. This is super fun. Absolutely. Like, it's been awesome to hang out with you guys in the chat as well. And don't, ma don't forget to come back here to twitch.tv slash first inspires for all tons of first TV programs. And uh, hopefully we will see you guys really soon. All right. Have fun. Bye.